today we're going to go over drag and kind of how forces act on vehicles and just general parts and airflow. So you got three main types of drag. You have friction, you have pressure, you have induced. And so I've kind of partly prepared some of this so I don't have to be drawing pictures in the video. But we'll go from kind of left to right and kind of explain the three different main types of drag. And then it will kind of touch on a little bit uh, lift or downforce also. Um, so first big one is friction, which will also be called kind of, it's a wall shear stress. Um, it's kind of what you view it in as CFD. Um, so when you do first one, so it, as airflow is flowing over a surface, if there was no friction, it would look like this. You'd have velocity, air, free flowing across here. These would all be equivalent. So they would all be the same. Now, if you take in effect friction, you're going to have something along the lines like this. And because friction is acting that way, just how, and basically it turns equivalent velocities into a par parabolic shape. And this is where boundary layer growths come from and things like that. This makes up about 15% of the total drag on a road car, about 30% on a race car with underbody. Uh, you can actually solve for this in CFD. You can break up the differences of all three of these and actually calculate all three. Uh, so in CFD, I have found these to be fairly close and accurate. These were taken, taken from a theoretical book. However, I did get very similar results. Now on to pressure. So this is an airfoil looking at from the top view, no end plates. We'll assume this is for an airplane. This will be the low pressure side, high pressure side is going to be there. So as airflow flows over an airfoil, you'll basically get vortices that form off the ends. There's one reason you put end plates on there for race cars. Uh, so these vortices are actually pressure dragging. So you want to decrease these off the wing as much as possible if you want to decrease the pressure drag. Another way to view it is you have, let's say this is a box or some square with velocity flowing this way. You will get kind of airflow that comes off like this, and then you'll get some that basically turn up like this. You get basically, this is called like a dead water region. So you have basically dead air that circulates behind. This is also pressure drag. So think about on a car. On the back of a car, this is very common. So you will have a big area. Say you have a, I don't know, diffuser coming up like right here. I know it's bad drawing. And then this comes up like this. So you'll have airflow that comes. It'll come down similar to this and you'll have this dead region behind the car. This is where a diffuser actually can help to decrease drag because it will actually bring airflow up into this region and decrease that pressure drag. And then the third one is induced drag. This is also called lift induced drag. So this would be drag that's caused inherently by making downforce or lift. So this is a dummy wing side profile. So when you have airflow flows, it's going to obviously split between top and the bottom. However, when you get this, what actually creates downforce is pressure differential. So you have high pressure on the top side, so you have plus, and then you have minus on the bottom side. That's what creates downforce. So this is applied to the surface of the actual wing itself. However, it's applied normal to the surface. So what that means is it's basically 
So this is an arm, it's gonna come down like this. And then you're gonna have basically arrows go down like this. So this is that's kind of what it's going to look like. You have ones on the top also. So you have positive. So it's going to be applied like that. So what does that really mean with drag? All right, when you're looking at drag, first let's kind of go to what a normal coordinate system would be. So if this was a wing on a car, we would call this positive Z, we would call this positive X. Because Y would actually go this way. So when you look at forces, drag force would be F of X, down force, or it will actually be lift, would be F of Z, and then if you're actually getting down force, this number would be negative. It's pretty common, this is what pretty sure everybody uses uh, aerospace racing automotive so when you go over here on this you would actually erase a few of these so we actually have some room so say we take this one it's going normal down to that surface so this would actually be broken into components we have one component this way one component this way this would be your force Z your force of X. This force of X is would be lift induced drag. So that is the drag caused by weight. So then when you start getting into why dual and triple element wings are very inefficient overall compared to a single element, it's because you would end up having another element up like this that has air flow going through and you would have vectors normal to the surface. Well when you start getting up here your f of x is much bigger than your f of x would be right here which is why drag would increase much more, which means you would lose efficiency. Now let's go to, this is like a dummy diffuser. So you have, it's obviously two d You have airflow, and then you basically create a diffuser, so you do the same thing. You would have basically vectors normal to the surface. So because of most of these aren't very aggressive, you end up actually getting a fairly low F of X, which would be drag. So there would be some, like right in here, obviously you'd have some going that way, some going this way. So that's a V. Effects. However, once you start getting out towards, say, the end where it's starting to kind of flatten out, this is still low pressure, which means this down vector, if this equals the amount of force compared to the drag, would be something like this. So you'd be making a lot more down force for how much drag you're making. This is why underbodies can actually be very, very, very efficient. Um, is because you don't have as much of uh, induced drag as you would with a wing. And they also have a lot of area. Because you have the entire underbody of a car, creates a lot of area, basically force equals pressure times area. So you can kind of, as area increases, force will also increase. So, you, so if you extend the area of a surface that has 
these the same pressure, your force is going to go up. Which is beneficial, which is why bigger wings make more downforce. Makes sense, logically. And one last thing about this, since we've seen this before on social media, on some questions that we've had. Um, so if you take a point, say right here, and you're looking at where the pressures and where the forces are going, normal to the surface, it's going to be going down like that. So, say we take a vector, that point, it's going down. Well, if you take its, com uh, its components, so you have right here, F, F sub E, F, F sub X, going that way. Well, here, according to our normal coordinate system, so X positive is going this way, while the vector is going this way. So the force at x is negative. So that, in essence, would be thrust. But when you look at a full airfoil, very few of those points are going to be facing forward. It's just offsetting some of the forces back here that are actually pointing backwards. So we are getting a total drag. But there are some points that you can take on the surface of the airfoil or whatever you're looking at that is actually going to be thrust uh, going forward. So that's just one kind of misconception that we've had. People don't necessarily believe it, but it's not saying that this airfoil, because of this one point right here, is going to want to go this way. It would actually want to be going this way because it has a total drag of FX that's positive, always going rearward. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more videos like this soon. Thank you.